So I wanted to take you through my full Hargreaves Lansdowne portfolio to where I hold actually a majority of my holdings. And in today's video, I'm going to go through everything I've got currently in my SIP and everything I've got in my regular fund and share account. I also used to have part stocks and shares eyes with Hargreaves Lansdowne as well. I've recently actually taken that money. I've moved a little bit into Vanguard and I've got a little bit in cash as well, which I'm probably going to spread around a few different investments to in the future. But I'm going to take you through every single holding why I hold it, some interesting news. And also really, I just wanted to show you and kind of be in the trenches with you guys to show you that my portfolio has also been hit like a lot of others. And for a long-term investor like myself, at the end of the day, these things happen a lot. And in the short term, anything can happen. And I've got no issue at all with holding these stocks for a very, very long length of time. And one of the reasons I wanted to make this video and make things really transparent is because ultimately I wanted to make sure that I was being completely clear and completely open with everyone with everything I practice and preach on this channel, talking about making sure that I've got the core of my portfolio in index funds, but also that I enjoy stock picking too and making sure that I've got control of my own destiny as well. And that I don't invest in companies which make absolutely no profit at all, or at least don't have some sort of chance. And I don't go YOLOing into anything crazy either. So I'm gonna get myself logged in now on Targaryen's Lansdowne. We're gonna go through my SIP and then we're gonna go for my fund and share account. So we're gonna see every single stock and share that I've got. So firstly, let's jump into my SIP. This is a lot more boring, but certainly something that I'm gonna have for a much longer term because it's gonna be sat there until I'm at least 58 before I can get access to it. So, and you'll see on the screen now that it's a good healthy balance at the moment of just over 40, thousand pounds of which mostly is put into what is a legal and general US index fund. So consider that pretty much a S&P 500 tracker, which has been doing pretty well since I've managed to merge all of the money here together. I'd love to know what the full return of the money was from all of the different investments, because this is only going to show me since that money's been invested. Now, various amounts of money has been invested longer than others. Now, I've also got a very small amount in the Vanguard Emerging Market Stock Index Fund as well, which you'll see on screen now. That's a lot less money. And of course, you can see that actually from a gain perspective, there's not been much happening in those emerging markets. But I still wanted to have some money in there because, like I say many times in this channel, we actually have no idea where the future growth is going to come from. If I just go into the holding here, you'll see overall in terms of gain and loss, it's up 15% overall since I've put those different amounts of money in, which is pretty healthy. Um, it doesn't change a huge amount on, on the daily, so you can tend to sleep pretty easy when you look at this sort of investment. If I just go into the actual fund itself, just to confirm everything I've just been saying for you. So it's not an ETF, this is an index fund, it is a mutual fund. Very, very low cost, very, very low fee on the Hargreaves Lansdowne platform, managed by Legal in general. And you'll see on screen now, it's got a net charge of 0.06%, which is pretty low indeed. You'll also see that this is an accumulation fund. So there's no paying out on this one. This will effectively just keep rolling over, keep rolling over and ultimately get me to where I want to be. So this is a really super simple portfolio. And then I wanted to keep it simple because I didn't really want to touch my SIP or anything like that. I just wanted to leave it be let it passively kind of grow itself over a long period of time because I can't touch it for many years anyway. I'll tell you what I'll do really quickly now is I'll pop up on screen what this potentially could be worth. I'm 33 now, so in kind of 25 years time when I'm 58, and that's the current age that I'll be able to touch this SIP and touch it and actually take some money out without any heavy penalties and what it will be worth. And I'll pop that up on screen now. It should be a healthy amount of money, but you can always add to this if needs be. Right, onto the juicy stuff. So let's have a look at my fund and share account. So quick disclaimer on this one. Just remember that this is just a plain fund and share account. This isn't a stocks and shares ISA. So from a tax perspective, if I did make any ridiculous gains, they technically would be taxable events. But because it's not a huge amount of money, you've got your capital gains allowance and you've also got your dividends allowance to play with too. I would always recommend, and I do eventually want to have all of these holdings in the stocks and shares ISA. And just like in the Olympics, let's take you through from worst pick to all the way through to the best. So, and I have shared some of these in some of my previous videos as well. If you appreciate the transparency, please do drop me a big fat like on the video. It really helps out small channels like mine. But anyway, let's get back to the portfolio. So my biggest loser currently is good old Deliveroo. Now this is a funny one because I put in a thousand pounds pre IPO on this one. You may as a Deliveroo customer got that same email that I did saying you could actually put some money in pre IPO. 
I thought that sounds very good to me. So I just put in a small amount of money. Thousand was actually the maximum you could pick. And I'm kind of glad because I, I bet if they had allowed you to put in more, I probably would have put in more. And that could have been a very bad mistake, at least for the short term. So currently what I'm looking at now is an overall loss on delivery of 68%. I don't think anyone wants to buy uh, delivery stock at the moment, which is pretty hilarious. So this one IPO'd back in July, 2021. So it hasn't been public for a very, very long at all. You'd have to live under a rock to not understand what Deliveroo did. Of course, it delivers different kinds of food items to you very, very quickly from supermarkets and takeaways and all those kinds of things. It's a very, very fast growing, highly competitive area competing with the likes of Uber Eats. And there's a few new startups in the space as well who they're trying to compete with. Revenues rising on the positive note, high gross margins, relatively good in terms of business model. And really, it's one of those things which is only going to make a big ton of money once it consistently scales. But they're spending a lot of money at the moment on sales and marketing to get that going. They are constantly losing money at this stage, so it's not the kind of business that I would typically buy. But in terms of future plans for this one, again, I'm not concerned because of the amount of money it is. I will want to hold this one for the longer term. I do have high hopes for the organization when they scale and when they get very big. I don't think that quick delivery model is going to go away anytime soon. Okay, this is a really interesting one, and this one's been an absolute roller coaster ride for me. So, and this one used to be one of my biggest gainers in my account. So, this one is Evrat. So, these are a huge Russian mining company headquartered actually in London, but of course, all their operations are around the world, mainly based in Russia and Ukraine. So, this stock, Evrat, has been a massive roller coaster for me. At one point, it was actually my highest earning, highest percentage return stock. It's got a couple of good things going for it at the moment. In that sector, in that steel, in that commodity sector, they have been making record profits as the commodity price of steel and coal and energy has been rising. Of course, their profits would rise with that one too. They also pay a really good healthy dividend. And because of the price I bought this stock at, my dividend yield is actually extremely high on this one. So my yield on cost is relatively good. I've been paid some good dividends through this company at the moment. Now, a couple of interesting things on the news you would have seen about this company recently. Of course, we have the Russia-Ukraine conflict at the moment, which is, is making everyone sell off this company. And it set the dividend yield, I think, at the moment, nearly above 50%, which is absolutely insane. They've just announced a new dividend to be paid at the end of March. Although with the swift cutoff, I actually have no idea whether that will definitely go through or not. And then there's a second point. They've just recently de-merged from a company called Radspadskaya or Radspadskaya, I'm not sure how I say that one correctly. They've essentially demerged and taken the coal business with them and which has reduced the value of the company. And because I'm a UK shareholder, I'm effectively going to get some cash from that sale. So based on my current holding of Evraz, I'm owed about uh, I think two and a half thousand pounds, two and a half thousand dollars ish in cash from that sale, which I think is going to be paid toward the end of the year. So the stock has gone ex capitalization. And I'm also, of course, owed that dividend, which is uh, 50 cents a share, I believe. And I've got 1,300 shares of the company. At the end of the day, the world needs different commodity products. And I do want to be exposed to those commodity products because like anything we say, when we want to beat inflation, we want to own things which are going to beat inflation and go up over time. So, so long term, I will hold this, I think, and take advantage of those high dividends and then probably reinvest those elsewhere. I probably won't reinvest in the company just at the moment. But watch this space, of course, it's highly volatile at the moment, so I think I'll just leave things be. There's no rush to do any actions, and we'll actually see if we actually get paid this demerger money and get paid this dividend with the SWIFT system cutoff, who knows. Next up, one of the most popular funds with UK investors is Bailey Gifford American Fund. This has had an amazing run over the last five years. In fact, I'll put a chart up now showing its performance against the S&P 500, for example, because at one point it was beating the S&P 500 by more than three times, but in the last 12 months, had a bit of a terrible time. And you'll see this because it's heavily based around tech stocks like Shopify, Tesla, and others who, of course, have seen a massive run up in the COVID dip. I have been investing in this for a while. I did dollar cost average for a while. I think I had a direct debit going in for 500 pounds a month. However, I think like any managed fund, at the end of the day, we have to remember as investors that there's a high likelihood that over the very long term, because it's a large cap market fund effectively, that it probably won't beat the market. And although it has beaten the market previously, the outflows now because of its performance means that people are actually pulling money out of the stock, which is quite interesting. And I bet that the majority of investors in this fund actually put money in it when it was near the top and when it was doing really, really well, rather than being invested in it for the last five years. So I'm not gonna go anywhere soon with it. I'm certainly not gonna be selling it anytime soon. 
I am looking forward to its recovery. There has been a big sell off with all the tech stocks that it has inside it. I do have some high hopes for these guys. And of course, with the management of the fund, you would expect them to try and beat the market. But if it doesn't beat the market over the next couple of years, then I probably will reconsider my position and move those funds elsewhere. Next up, another fund which has actually had a big bounce back over the last few days, which is quite interesting, is the iShares Global Clean Energy Fund. Now, at one point I was down on this one quite heavily, probably got this one into bad, quite bad timing because of all this clean energy revolution and thought I don't want to miss the boat on this one. So this one was definitely put in with a bit of uh, a bit of FOMO, probably too much of my portfolios in this one for my liking. However, I think from the long term, we do know that this is going to be the future. Which companies will succeed in the clean energy future? No idea. So an ETF or a fund like this one is probably the best way to invest in that one. So like I said, it's had a bit of a shift recently with the sentiment and what's going on with the Russia-Ukraine situation as people are more concerned about the reliance on fossil fuels and older technologies that there is a sentiment now that says, okay, this is now time to catalyze the clean energy revolution. So we've seen some big gains over the last couple of days in this one and it's now got myself up. So I'm only 20% down. And I'm pretty sure when I did my last video about some of my biggest losses, that this one was only 40% down or maybe even more. So again, it's a long-term hold for me and you might notice this pattern keep coming up and I'm not really concerned with a lot of these losers because there's nothing in my portfolio that holds such a big sway that means I can't sleep well at night and I don't invest money that I'm not prepared to have out for a long amount of time. There's nothing in my short-term life that I need cash for and I always keep cash on the side. I guess you'd call that your emergency fund to make sure you could actually invest in the first place. And finally, my next loser is Unilever. So this guy's, even if you hadn't heard of them, big player on the FTSE 100, one of the largest companies listed here in the UK. They own hundreds of different brands in the consumer goods sector. And not much has gone on really with the price recently, other than probably sliding a bit down <laughs> than it should be. They recently hit the news with their bid for part of GSK's company, 50 billion pounds, which ended up getting pushed out. So unfortunately, the company hasn't done anything particularly exciting, but they are a very consistent company in terms of paying dividends and they're going to probably deliver very slow and steady growth. It might be a bit lumpy, but I'd like to think that this is an inflation beating play because they have strong brands in their portfolio. If they rose their prices by just a, you know, a few P on different items that people want to buy, then those strong brands mean that they're able to do that and people won't shop around and go elsewhere. So that's the final losses. Now onto the exciting stuff. Let's look into some of the biggest winners and there's some really, really good stuff here again for long-term hold. Okay, no surprises here. One of the biggest companies in the world. So Apple is up over 35% at least in my portfolio for this current position. It is an absolute cash generation king. If you just look at some of the basic financials of this company, if you've never actually looked, you'll see some huge gross margins. Of course, every time you buy a lovely new iPhone on contract, they get a lovely amount of money. And people who use MacBook Pros and iPads, there's probably enough Apple stuff in this household for a small army. Um, it is part of the major indexes already, of course. So a lot of my funds are already in those broad index funds and Apple makes up a big chunk of that one too. But buying Apple separately means I get myself overexposure to this amazing company. Again, if we think about things like the, the brand and the pricing power this sort of company has, it doesn't matter whether inflation is really high, interest rates are low, interest rates are high, this company has got cash in the bank, they've got some amazing innovations, and they're making loads and loads of money, and they're making more and more money as well from things like services too, so watch this space. No surprises, long-term hold. Now an interesting one actually, and one that's gone up surprisingly more than I thought. So Legal and General, so the UK-based insurance and investment company, um, it's up 40% at the moment for me. Again, this was more of my defensive plays that I wanted to mix in with the more um, high growth tech stocks, just to make sure I've got more of a balanced portfolio. Great dividend payer. The current yield, I think, is sat around 6 to 7% because of the pricing. I think it's not going to go anywhere fast, but again, cash generating monster and it's something that's going to consistently pay that dividend for me which I will probably reinvest into the company but unless something else comes up I could buy elsewhere but solid hold UK based company but they do business elsewhere plenty of areas for growth and lots of money to be made in that insurance sector next up some of my favorite companies as a massive nerd and a massive geek companies like AMD so they're currently up 45% in my portfolio Huge chip maker who makes CPUs and GPUs, two of which are in my computer at the moment. So I'm a huge fan of their CPUs. 
and of course graphics cards as well more so on their competitors graphics cards but we'll talk about them a little bit later they've of course seen a huge demand in their chips throughout the pandemic and as they've grown and their ryzen range has kind of smashed intel a bit so intel used to kind of lead the way for many many years in this gaming space in this consumer space and certainly in the enterprise too but amd's technology as they put more and more into r d They've now really overtaken Intel in lots of those benchmarks in terms of the power of the chips and the efficiency of the chips and in terms of pricing too. And of course, where they're winning at the moment is having their chips in lots and lots of devices. As lots of devices in your home get smarter too, AMD is there. Phenomenally profitable business too, which didn't used to be the case just a few years ago. They're making an absolute killing at the moment. And they did announce their results quite recently and it's probably not going to go away anytime soon. So again, long-term hold for this one. We'll probably add to the position, but we'll see how things go. The only danger, of course, with a big tech stock is if they get overvalued. So I will need to think about really positions where I take profit, but who knows? Okay, another one of my favorite stocks in terms of an absolute tech nerd. I've got a lovely NVIDIA graphics card in my system at the moment, and I've had NVIDIA stuff for over a decade easily when I've been building computers, either me or my brother. So these guys cash generating monster have seen demand go through the roof over the last five to ten years or so have benefited from the boom of crypto mining with their graphics cards and of course anything in ai and data center where people need to crunch more numbers run different kind of models and simulations and they've seen a bit of a boost from all of the talk about the potential metaverse etc one of the things with nvidia and there isn't necessarily great competition in this space so although they could do compete with amd if you've been a gamer like me, you'll know that AMD graphics cards haven't really been able to keep up with NVIDIA. They've typically run hotter. They haven't really done as well. The technologies and the software built inside hasn't been quite as slick. NVIDIA absolutely destroy AMD on the graphics card segment. And also, you would have seen this over the last few years, maybe if you've been more involved in the space, but NVIDIA's pricing power is exceptional. So I remember getting some of the top nvidia graphics cards just a few years ago and there would be more like six or seven hundred pound would be you'd get the absolute best one and now it's around 1200 to 1500 pounds and they haven't really dropped those prices and demand is still through the roof try and go on amazon to buy an nvidia graphics card you're still paying above rrp at the moment huge profit margins huge growth just from their recent um, earnings data easy long-term hold for me as an investor and a user too. This is a bit of a surprise riser for me because I was initially bought BP really just more of a steady stream of dividends to kind of pump my earnings up and be more of a defensive stock. But because of the price of oil and because of conflict at the moment, the stock price has actually risen a lot more than I would have expected. So we're currently sat around 78% at the time of filming. Um, there's no surprise in terms of what this company does, being that company that's going to produce oil, refine and sell that to you as well as a consumer and as the price rises of that commodity they're going to make more money because their costs aren't really going to go up much more than they already are at the moment we know that the world demand isn't going to go anywhere and as the world does transition to a greener planet and a greener more renewable sustainable energy functions i can see bp certainly going there along with it they're not stupid at the end of the day so they will use those profits and use that money and pump that into sustainable energy too so this is a good one, always going to be reliant on the price of the underlying commodity, so you never really know. This one might be another one worth thinking about points of taking profit and redistributing that cash, but good dividend payer as well always delivers a good amount back to shareholders. And finally, it feels embarrassing saying this one like a lot of people because I'm absolutely not a massive Tesla fanboy in terms of the stock. Love the company, love the product, but I hate the cultishness around Tesla and the share price, people just think it's going to go to the moon um, for absolutely no reason at all. There's huge innovation there. They make great profit margins for a car company, the automotive side of the business. And of course, they've got huge potential in terms of the full self-driving, energy storage and all of the other business opportunities, but they're not yet doing it. So there's a huge amount of faith and trust built into that share price that says, we think this company is going to be amazing. and it is growing like the clappers and it's doing great for the automotive side of the business, but all of the rest of it is to be seen, right? And how many times do we see companies like Lucid or Rivian who are so far behind, yet they've got massive share prices and massive earnings potential built into that price because people think and hope 
that it's going to happen. So either way, I've got seven shares in the company. I do think that the company will grow. There's absolutely no doubt about that. And the share price will rally to unbelievable levels, which may always be disconnected from the underlying fundamentals of the business because it is quite hard to stomach. You do have to have a lot of faith in that long term growth. And I think a lot of people get way too excited about seeing every single person on the planet driving a Tesla. Um, not everyone's going to be driving a £45,000 or $45,000, $50,000 car at the end of the day. And there's huge supply chain issues in order to actually make that happen as well. And the charging infrastructure and all these other things going with it. So no one knows the future. Saying all of that, though, as a cautious investor, I probably would add a couple of a couple more shares to this stock purely because of the community around it will probably pump and hold this stock up forever. But hey, what a reason to invest. So anyway, this is my entire portfolio on Hargreaves Lansdowne. As you know, I do have several other portfolios too, which I will do updates of. I've got my Vanguard ISA, got free trade account. I've got money in stake. I've also got money in Lightyear as well. So look out for that. I've made a few uh, holdings in that one. And I do have my crypto holdings too, and some private pre-IPO equity that I've got in a company that I used to work in as well. So, but most importantly, please do let me know in the comment section below what you actually think. Do you think any of the holdings need to be trimmed? Should I add to any of these positions? I don't want to get this one too wide. I don't want to get this one too broad. You know I'm a very long-term investor looking for bargains, looking for undervaluations, and also happy to pay for the right companies have to pay for growth too. So I'm not looking for cigar butts. I'm certainly happy to stick with companies who've got long-term prospects. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Drop me a like if you have, subscribe for many more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Happy investing.